Today is the first day of Women's History Month, and unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard country music has gotten Beyonce-fied. After their surprise release last month of two singles off of Beyonce's upcoming album, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, unsurprisingly, some folks weren't happy that this black woman superstar in the worlds of R&B and pop would venture into country, even though she is from Houston, Texas, literally. A small country music station in Oklahoma initially refused to play Texas Hold'em, but changed its tune after being inundated by the Beehive. Last week, Be 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 Beyonce became the first black woman to top Billboard's Hot Country chart and got the stamp of approval from the queen of country music herself, the great Dolly Parton, for doing so. The most Grammy-winning artist in history knows how to knock down barriers for herself. But Beyonce is also giving some deserved shine to other black country and folk artists, like Rhiannon Giddens, who plays banjo on Texas Hold'em. Giddens wrote about the black roots of country music this week, reminding us enslaved people of the African diaspora created the banjo in the Caribbean in the 1600s. This is historical fact. The hype around Bay's new single is also amplifying the many black artists already in country music. It's the Beyonce boost in streams for black women country artists, including a 275% increase. Wow for a pioneer of the genre, Linda Martell, the first black woman artist to play the Grand Ole Opry back in 1969. I'm joined now by songwriter and producer Alice Randall, the first black woman to co-write a number one country single and the author of the upcoming book, Memoir, the upcoming memoir, My Black Country, which also has a companion album. It is so great to talk with you, Alice Randall. And so I just want to start by getting your take on all of the sort of contretemps <laughs> around Beyonce charting in country. I have to play this. This is John Schneider. He used to be on a show that used to glorify the Confederate flag on a car. Here he is. He's, by the way, he's from New York. But here he is. We don't have it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to read what he said. This is what John Schneider, who used to play one of either Bo or Luke Duke in the Dukes of Hazard, he said, they've got to make their mark just like a dog in a dog walk park. You know, every dog has to make mark every tree. So that's what's going on here. Would you like to respond to that? That comment is idiocy. I'll just say that simply. That is a, a uninformed comment. So, African Americans have been in recorded country music since its beginning. It's Women's History Month, so I want to shout out immediately to Lil Hardin. Johnny Cash declared, the great Johnny Cash, that Blue Yodel Number no. 9 was the most iconic country song of all time. Who played on every bar of Blue Yodel Number no. 9? Lil Hardin, a Black woman. That was 1930. Country itself what? begins, I believe, with D4 Bailey in 1927 playing Pan American Blues on WSM radio. Black people have been in recorded country since the beginning. And as the brilliant Rhiannon Giddens pointed out, we have been uh, we have been contributing to the form since the uh, form was unrecorded, since it was yeah. not before it was recorded. Yeah, I mean, and creating the banjo kind of makes the black folk a part of country music. It, you know, it is interesting, the sort of, you know, music is one of the most segregated formats, right? It is extremely segregated. And there was this idea that there's white radio and black radio. Even rock and roll gets segregated. After black folks create it, suddenly, you know, white people will redo it. People like Elvis become superstars from it. But then they segregate it and say, now black people can't do rock and roll. It's a weird thing that happens in the music industry. Why do you think it's still happening now in the 21st century? It's complex and that has to do with marketing because I wanna make it very clear that country music by definition, in my opinion, is a combination of English, Irish, and Scottish ballot forms plus African-American influences plus evangelical Christianity. It actually requires uh, African-American influences to be country or it's, it's folk music. So, mm -hmm. uh, so those have to do with marketing things. At some point, someone thought they made more money by dividing the audiences. And some people, I uh, think it was part of how race was constructed in America to divide these audiences. 
And I think that there has been a kind of cultural redlining that Beyonce has triumphantly evaded in this moment. Yeah. It is interesting to listen to somebody, an actor from New York who pretended to be a Southerner, going after a woman who's literally from Texas and who is a product of the very culture that created country music. She's much more legitimate in the genre than anything he could ever do. So, the, you know, the audacity of him to comment at all. I believe everyone, I invite all voices into the conversation, but I will just say that for example, the Texas, another big black influence on country and Western music, or a lot of people don't know, I've heard this comment, your costume is not our, don't take our culture, your costume is not our culture. Well, those are people who don't understand that a large percentage of 19th and 20th century cowboys were black and brown. Yeah. And that actually cowboy culture is significantly African-American culture. And cowboy songs, the 19th century cowboy yeah. songs that were discovered were the first cowboy camp that the uh, Thorpe came across was a black cowboy camp singing songs. So yeah. there are many different ways that black culture has, uh, has entered Absolutely. into country and Western music. Absolutely. C cowboys were essentially enslaved cattle herders who then went private practice <laughs> and essentially we're doing the same cattle herding they were doing as enslaved people for money a quarter of them were black uh, alice randall isn't going anywhere because guess what it's about to be our favorite part of the week who won the week is back and we'll be right back <laughs>